What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a review for you of the new Fuji X100V camera. So a very common saying is that the best camera is the one that you have with you, and personally my workflow right now includes a cinema camera as well as a Canon 1DX, but most of the time video is my priority. I make YouTube videos, I need to record B-roll, and if I was traveling I would have it set up in like a video setup on like a gimbal and everything, and photos just don't seem to usually be the main priority, but I really do want to start taking many more photos and even improve on that because that is an area where I'm just not as good at compared to others. So up until now, the camera that I've been using the most is the one on the iPhone, and even though that is a great camera and many phones are having impressive camera technology nowadays, it's just not going to beat something like this, where you've got a small form factor, a 26.2 megapixel APS-C sensor, and just being able to shoot raw images on like a nice large sensor and have the customized settings and really be able to refine your photography skills is just amazing for something like this, especially as like a travel camera. So this is something that I personally wasn't planning to check out, but when I saw the level of excitement from Fuji fans in initial videos, along with some opinions from a couple friends, I decided that this is a camera that could really fit into my camera lineup. There just seems to be a lot of love and loyalty for the X100 line, and this newest generation seems to have made many improvements from the previous one, both in terms of its lens, the sensor, and also the video recording. I've also heard some amazing things of the color science on Fuji cameras, especially when it comes to some of the film simulations as well. So after having a few weeks with it, I'm going to give you like all my impressions on like the hardware, the way it's built, some of the new improvements, as well as just some camera samples and how they look after I edited them. So at the price point of $1,400 in the US, it is definitely not the cheapest camera out there, but I feel like it has a nice medium price point. You don't need to really buy anything else. It's got the lens built in at a 23 millimeter focal length, which is equivalent of 35 millimeter on a full size sensor. But to summarize, this is a camera that I definitely plan to keep. So with the fifth generation of this camera, Fuji really didn't hold back. It's got a lot of the new features that people have been wanting to see for many years, including an improved lens optic, as well as the same sensor that is found on the newly announced X-T4. So just from looking at it right here, this camera is absolutely beautiful. It comes in both a black as well as a silver option, and the silver just gives you like a nice retro look to it. And this thing is also extremely well built as well, and also has weatherproof if you add a UV filter to the front. But otherwise, the rest of the body is weather sealed. The camera is also not intimidating at all when it comes to appearance and usability and looking at the front and moving over to the back, you have the dial for manual focus, you also have your manual aperture and on the top you're going to find your shutter speed as well as a new mechanism that clicks on and off for the ISO. You're also going to find your EV on the right side as well as a shutter of course and on the back they've kept it very simple here by removing the D-pad and just giving you a joystick as well as three different buttons for your menu, play and also display options. From first impressions, I have no complaints about the way this camera is built and the way the buttons are laid out and it just makes like a very nice sound. Everything about it just clicks very nicely and like just hear the sound of this. After using this camera for like just a few days or even in the first few hours, you can really get a feel for all the buttons and of course you have the option to customize them to your needs as well. If you flip open the door on the side here, you've got USB Type-C for charging, which I love. You can use like an external battery pack while you're on the go. And it also has a micro HDMI for output if you want to record 10-bit video. Another nice feature is that there are ND filters built in. So if you want to shoot at F2 outside on a bright and sunny day, even if you crank that shutter speed, you still have a little bit of assistance with the NDs. So when it comes to the sensor, this camera has a 26.1 megapixel APS-C X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor, the same one found on the X-Pro and the new X-T4. The lens is also an improved Fujinon 23mm f2 which comes out of the equivalent of about 35mm like I mentioned and it is sharp. I think the only minor complaints that I saw from like the previous generation is that the edges just weren't as sharp and from what it seems like they've done a good job improving this generation and have changed many features as opposed to giving you like a couple features and leaving the rest for the next generation which other companies seem to do. <laughs> Being someone who usually likes to have like a large arsenal of lenses that cover different focal range from the wides, the primes, and also the zooms, having to use a fixed lens is a bit of an adjustment period at the start, but if you think about it, most phones have one camera, or one main camera at least, and people are perfectly fine with that, so by using like a fixed lens like this, equivalent to 35 millimeters, it really does help you practice your composition and get better as a photographer as opposed to getting too lazy by zooming in or zooming out to get your image. If you do want a little bit more range though, there is also a 50 and 75 millimeter digital teller converter setting if you really have to use it. And there is also hardware options as well, such as purchasing a wide or telephoto adapter that screws onto the front that may add a little bit more size but gives you the range that you might want. 
When it comes to colors, I just started testing out some Fuji cameras very recently, which started out with the GFX100, which is an absolute monster, but costs a lot of money, and also this one. And I've heard nothing but good things about the Fuji line from friends that have used it. And I've got to say, the colors definitely live up both out of camera as well as after editing, which is something that I prefer. But it's just got this look to it, sort of like a bit of a classic look, and you can adjust how much grain as well as which film setting you want to use. But even just taking like standard images and editing them in post, I really like like the warm and smooth skin tones on this camera. And as someone who usually finds something that I like in terms of cameras or smartphone, I end up trying to get everybody to buy it because there's just something that I love so much about it. I can definitely understand all the hype when it comes to the color technology in Fuji cameras. The autofocus performance is also very good. It has a 425 point system, as well as the option for face and eye tracking. And although this is something that not everybody's going to use, if you're just handing off your camera to like a friend who doesn't know how to use a camera, you usually do want to have that setting just to ensure that they can get that photo in focus. As someone who hates being in front of the camera for Instagram photos, having something like this that is small, that is not intimidating, and that you can trust the autofocus system for like street photography is great. Definitely makes things a lot easier. The autofocus seems to nail it, but there are a few situations where I did find that it took a couple seconds to hunt and it may have sounded like it wasn't really locking on the focus, but when you took the image more often than not, in many cases, it was able to get it. The touchscreen and joystick allows you to set the screen quickly, and with a 3 inch touchscreen that now also hinges up, that is a nice feature to have, but I know some people do wish that the screen did flip out entirely, which would make it a very good vlog camera. The hybrid viewfinder has also been upgraded to a higher resolution OLED of 3.69 million dots. So before we move on to some of the video samples, I wanted to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Motion VFX. I've been using their plugins for a few years now, and pretty much every single video that you see on the channel consists something from Motion VFX, whether it is the transitions or the text effects. One of their newest plugins is M Movie Lights, and it gives you cinematic lighting effects within Final Cut Pro 10 that are fully customizable and come with 60 elements. With just a drag and drop, it gives you atmospheric lighting as well as cinematic effects, and it also has very easy to use and intuitive controls that you can all customize in Final Cut Pro 10. With the Fuji camera and its film simulations, as well as the F-Log which I personally used, it really does let you add to the cinematic effect of the video footage. Another plugin that is also very handy is M Film Look, and this is like an all-in-one toolbox for filmmakers out there to control some of the white balance as well as the levels, exposure, contrast, add a LUT to your footage, film grain, as well as a letterbox if needed. They have hundreds of plugins on their site, so if you guys want to check it out, make sure you check that link down below. So now on to video recording, and this is an area that from what I heard needed a lot of improvement from the previous generation, and I've got to say, even though this is not a camera that I plan to record much video on, even having it on the go and by using some of the settings, including F-Log, has actually made it a pretty good experience. You can record up to 4K30 on this and 1080p 120, but if you really want to record a lot of video, I feel like the X-T4 is going to be a much more compelling option, being able to record 4K60. Keep in mind though that the internal recording is 4K 8-bit, but if you want to record in 10-bit, there is a capability as well if you use the micro HDMI port and connect it to something like an Atomos or external recorder. You can use all the regular picture modes that you have in photo as well as the classic negative, but my personal preference is shooting in F-Log because it gives you that flat look that maximizes dynamic range and also latitude when you go to edit it in post. The one thing that is missing though that I don't really expect to see in any camera around this size because it does take up more space is in-body image stabilization, which is something that is very helpful in video, but if you want to shoot a lot of video like I mentioned and want IBIS and the 4K60, then the X-T4 at $16.99 for the body only is going to be your choice. When it comes to the menu system, I've tried them all and I've found my preferences whether it is on Canon, Sony, or Panasonic. And for the most part, I personally like the Canon and the Panasonic menu and I've hated the one on Sony. The one on the Fuji though is very easy to use and I feel like they've kept things very simple both in terms of hardware but that kind of translates over to the software as well by giving you the settings that you need but also not overwhelming you with too many things. You can go ahead and go to the menus, change the image quality, the recording format as well as the dynamic range which does have a base ISO and we go into the video and the focus setting also gives you options as well both in terms of the display points as well as the face tracking and in the photo mode you can also set the different timers, long exposure, the flash also gives you some choices as well and when it comes to video mode, you can set your bitrate, resolution, the high speed mode, as well as white balance and dynamic range. Everything is just very easy to access and I have nothing but good things to say about the menu system and layout of this entire camera, both in terms of hardware and software. 
When it comes to the battery life, there is also an improvement in this year's model as well, which rated around 400 shots. And from my experience, I was able to take it for some maybe a couple hour shoots for two to three days, perfectly fine. So I would say the battery life does depend on what brightness you use a screen at or if you use the EVF versus the LCD. Personally, I use the LCD and I was able to get pretty solid battery life. I have to say though, being my first X100 camera, I really enjoyed my experience with this and it is a camera that is gonna go with me everywhere. Whether it's for travel or just day to day, you can just take it out, take some photos, it'll get you an amazing image. The colors and the autofocus and everything just seems to all go together and the hardware is very easy to navigate. Fuji just seems to be like a company that really sticks to their roots in terms of design. I mean, this thing looks like just like a retro film camera, but it's also been an innovator in technology and pushing the latest into their cameras while also really listening to consumers which is just something that you don't see much with technology companies nowadays. I heard from a friend who had a Fuji camera that there were features and software updates that were increasing the functionality of the camera even like a year later. So at the end of the day, what do I think of the Fuji X100V? Who is this for and should you buy it? And I will say, this is a camera that I am very happy that I found and almost wish I had a little bit earlier because previously I always wanted to take like the biggest setup everywhere I went and as a result of that, I just wasn't taking as many photos because like a big camera might not be allowed in certain places. At the price point of $1,400 in the US, I think this is something that if you plan to use it a lot or you travel a ton, this is like the perfect tool. And by having a fixed focal length at 35 millimeters, it will really help you improve your skills of compositing images and it also takes up almost no space as well. So really if you feel like your first Fuji camera, pick up one of these and eventually if you decide to commit to the Fuji system, you can go ahead and step up to like the X-Pro3 or the X-T4 or even like the medium format line and start committing to a collection of Fuji lenses. I really don't do many production or camera reviews unless something really impresses me because after being on YouTube for about 10 years, I definitely tried a lot of gear out there. So if you guys wanna see more of these, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below as to what other camera or BTS videos I should do about production.